Hello and welcome to How to Burr, Funding Options Explained. Here's a little info about me, but probably you already know me if you've been following this channel for a while. But for those of you that don't know me, I have 22 plus years in lending and real estate experience. I'm an active investor. I've completed 50 plus housing flip projects. I was even on TV, on HGTV. We did a show called Flip It to Win It. I'm a licensed California real estate broker. I've owned some real estate brokerages in the past, do some franchise sales and own a few small businesses and also am a YouTuber. So that's about me. Let's get started on the program here. And here's what we're gonna cover. Key concepts, an example, Burr, funding options, and more. So what is a DSCR portfolio rental loan? What is DSCR? It's, it stands for debt service coverage ratio. And essentially you take the monthly rental income and divide it by the monthly expenses. Monthly expenses include the principal interest taxes and insurance, and if applicable, the homeowners association. We call this PITIA. And essentially the DSCR calculation is a little bit different than what you would do on an actual commercial deal. But for these DSCR single family rental loans, this is how we calculate debt service coverage ratio. And essentially we look for a 1.2 ratio or better. Uh, we do have programs that allow for a 0 0.80. So there are options out there, but, but typically you want a property that essentially covers the debt and the payments, right? You wouldn't want to necessarily buy a negative property. Although sometimes people are, are purchasing properties for short-term rentals. And if we're not using a projection-based loan, sometimes the market rent or the long-term rent can suffice. And that's why we're able to sometimes go under the 1.2. So there's multiple options to fund these types of loans. So here is a example, loan amount 200,000. That gives you a, a principal interest payment at 1,113. And I think we calculated that at a rate of about 4.75. I forgot exactly. We have property taxes of 180 a month, insurance at 80 a month, and gross rental income of 1750 a month. So if we take the 1750 which is the gross monthly rent and divide that into the debt service payment of 1113 plus the 180 for property taxes and the 80 for the insurance, that number gives you 1.27, right? So that's would be a good good thing, right? Cuz we're over that 1.2. So you can simply calculate this yourself. It's a good simple way of knowing you know maybe you're doing a refinance with a debt service coverage ratio so you can see what your max proceeds would look like based on the income okay so what is property seasoning it is the amount of time a property has been owned or has had had an active mortgage so when did you buy the property how long have you owned it there's many options there's different lenders that have different seasoning requirements so when you're looking at burr properties it's important to know you know, work backwards, right? So it's going to be a three month rehab. Let's say you have to do a, a little bit of a cosmetic rehab. It's going to take you three months and then you lease it up maybe a month later. So you're in it four months and realistically, you're going to probably start to look for a refinance at that time. So you want to know what lenders will allow for new appraised value at what time frame, right? So some of them are 12 months, some of them are six months, some of, the, of them are 90 days, but if the property is vacant, they will do a rental survey and then give you a slight haircut on the LTV. So you want to know this on your cash out refinance for your Burr transactions. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Are you looking for funding? Are you getting frustrated trying to find a lender? Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and click the Get Funding button. Complete the simple form and schedule a free phone consultation with one of our placement specialists. We have a proprietary directory of funding partners that can help you get the funding you need. It's fast and easy to explore the options available for your specific needs. Don't wait. Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and get connected. So what's the difference between conventional versus DSCR loans? Okay, here's the big difference. DSCR loans, no tax returns required. 
you don't deal with the same DTI issues. With DTI is debt to income issues that you would on a conventional loan. Conventional loan pricing is typically a little bit better, but the DSCR loans are essentially no doc loans, except you do need bank statements usually. And you can also acquire these type of DSCR loans in a business entity, which is huge, right? You can own these in your LLC or corporation or your partnership, potentially. They don't show up on your personal credit report. And there's essentially unlimited amount of loans you can get, assuming that you meet the the income and the debt, debt service requirements. I mean, the DSCR requirements. There is no DTI requirements. So as long as you have the down payment, and they usually want to see a few months of reserves after you put your down payment down, but essentially you could have unlimited properties. And they're usually not concerned on seasoning requirements. So even if you might you know, have another joint venture partner and they gave you the money for the down payment and it was deposited in your bank account, that's not an issue. So seasoning requirements like on conventional loans are irrelevant with these DSCR loans. So that's another advantage. So a common structure we see is hard money to burr. And I'm going to talk to you about a way you can do this with no money in a pocket. We have a program, which is a 100% loan to cost program. So assuming that you can finance the purchase price plus rehab plus points, and that is under 75% of the after renovated value, you can get 100% financing with the hard money funding. You rehab the property and then use new appraised value refinance to 75% because that's typically where you're going to be capped on a cash out refinance. And if that refi can cover all the debt that's on the property, this hard money loan essentially is all of the purchase price, all of the rehab, the points and the debt service. You don't have to make monthly payments at a cruise. So this is a unique product we are offering now. And so for all my Burr fans out there, this is a great way to actually finance with other people's money. And you can completely leverage, assuming you can find the right deals doing it this way. The traditional hard money loans, you know, in, in today's present are 80 to 90% of purchase price, 100% of repair costs. So that means you need a 10 or 15% down payment plus closing costs. Plus you have to debt service the property each month on an interest only payment. So we have options here, depending on your financial situation, where we could potentially fund 100% of this. And if you execute your plan and the property appraises where it needs to appraise and your credit scores are there and you can do a 75% cash out on the, on the Burr portion of it, then you're good to go with no money out of pocket, essentially. And, and Burr, for anybody that doesn't know, is buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. And most of us don't have a bunch of cash sitting around. So we're always trying to leverage and we're always trying to recycle our money. And this is the tool that many of us investors are using to grow our portfolios and to grow our, our net worth. Okay, so let's get into a hard money to Burr example. In this assumption, you found a really good deal. Purchase price is 180,000. The renovation budget is 20,000. And the ARV or the after repair value is 325,000. So that means once the property is finished and let's say it does appraise at 325, we can do a cash out refinance to 75% of appraised value, which would be a loan amount of 243,750. So let's walk this down. Now I didn't use the 100% hard money loan uh, example on this. I used a 90% of purchase price with 100% of repair costs. So you're getting 162,000 at close. You got to come in with your 10% down payment plus closing costs. And then we're doing a construction holdback of 20,000. So borrowers out of pocket is 18,000 plus an estimated 7,000 in closing costs with title escrow, points, fees, lender costs. Carrying costs uh, on 182,000 is, is an interest only payment. And that's 1,080 a month. And we're figuring four months, 120 days, which would be about 4320 in monthly uh, debt service that you have to uh, account for. Utilities, let's figure $800 for those four months. So we're figuring total out of pocket is $25,000, which was the down payment plus closing costs, the $4,300, which is the debt service, and the $800, which is utilities. So you got to come out of pocket during these four months with $30,120. Now you got the property renovated 
and you're going to refinance and it appraises at 325, you get a 75% cash out refinance DSCR loan. So that puts your loan amount at 243,750. You're paying off the 182,000, which was the 162,000 plus the construction holdback. So that was your loan, your senior loan. Estimated cash out is 61,750. Rough estimate of $5,000 in closing costs. So that nets you 56,750. So the 56,750 pays back your total out of pocket, which was 30,120, and actually leaves you. 26, 630 in cash out. So now you have a, a rental property. This is a really good example. I mean, it's kind of a home run deal here, but um, not all of them are going to be this lucrative. But if you successfully complete and execute the plan, you have a property with 25% equity in it that is cash flowing, a couple hundred dollars a month. We didn't calculate that at this on this, but Obviously, it's it's cash flowing, and then at the time of refinance, you you get all of your thirty thousand one twenty back, and you actually get an additional twenty six six thirty back. So you have no money in the deal, twenty five percent equity. So twenty five percent equity, meaning that you know you're doing a loan of seventy five percent. So you have a valuation of three twenty five. So that gives you uh, eighty one thousand dollars of equity, eighty one thousand two fifty plus. You got twenty six thousand at close. And you have a cash flowing asset. So this would be like an example of an amazing burr. You get all your money back. You got eighty thousand in equity, and you even get twenty six thousand at close cash back on top of paying back yourself the thirty thousand out of pocket. So this is kind of like a a golden deal. I mean, we would do these all day long, right? But I wanted to show you an example of the power of the burr, and I think this kind of portrays it in a, in a great way because essentially. You keep doing this and, you know, rinse and repeat. That's the burr system. It's a rinse and repeat. So max leverage, um, like I said, typically 75% uh, is the cash out uh, limits with most of these DSCR lenders. Now on a rate and term refinance, some of them allow you to go to 80%. Now, if this is like a duplex, triplex or fourplex, there's certain different guidelines. Um, some of them cap you at 70, some will let you go to 75. So it's important knowing this up front, you know, whether it's a single family versus a small two duplex, triplex, or fourplex. All right. So conventional loans, what are the pros? It's usually a better rate. There's no prepaid penalty. What are the cons? Mucho paperwork, right? Lots of paperwork, DTI constraints. Usually you can't close in a business entity like an LLC or corporation. It shows on your personal credit report, and they usually won't count anticipated rent rental income like our DSCR loans will, because we'll do a rental survey if it's a vacant property. And usually you can't use that in your DTI on a conventional loan. And once again, a lot of paperwork. So what is delayed financing? I think a lot of us hear this term delayed financing. So delayed financing is a method for getting a mortgage after you purchase a piece of real estate using cash. And that's another reason why hard money is so great because you can usually close hard money deals in seven to 14 days, depending on the location and the scope of the re renovation. But some people, what they do <clears throat> is delayed financing where they pay cash and then within a six month period, they can actually take that HUD and get a conventional refinance and then essentially do a refinance. And on some conventional programs, you can you can get basically the proceeds you put down. So that's why it's important to document everything on a HUD. So even documenting your repair costs on the HUD is essential for getting the maximum amount of cash you can on a delayed financing deal. Delayed financing really only is applicable mostly in conventional financing because they the doing the hard money to burr and DSCR loans. We kind of navigate around having to do this delayed financing. I do have one lending partner, which is a hard money lender, and they they'll actually fund a hundred percent on the HUD. So when you go to refinance and, and do a conventional takeout, it actually helps you because you're you have all your renovation costs and purchase money costs documented on the closing statement. So best practices, obviously buy low, sell high, or buy low and refi at a high value. Learn how to use leverage and really know your after renovated value, know your ARV, really get good at comping properties. Obviously managing construction costs appropriately. This is probably, the construction element is usually the hardest part. With COVID, especially delays, people being sick, supply chain issues, cost of material going up. 
A lot of people set out thinking that they could get something done for say 20,000, but then, you know, they open up some walls and there's more repairs and that 20,000 becomes a $40,000 uh, scope of work. So we see a lot of overages on construction budgets and delays where people think, oh, I'll get this done in 90 days and it takes seven months. So that's all eating into your profits and into the ability to recoup your costs on the per refinance portion of it. So keep that in mind that you got to get good at managing contractors and making sure you're doing detailed scope of work and limiting change orders on your construction. Uh, it's always a good practice to never over leverage, always have a few months of reserves, maybe some business credit cards. I see a lot of people doing renovations and using their personal credit cards. And then all of a sudden they charge them up and they're they're utilizing all the they have a ten thousand dollar high credit limit at the and they're at nine thousand nine hundred ninety five. Well, even though you're never late on your credit scores, that's dropping your scores. So now you go from a seven forty credit score, and now you're down to a five ninety or six twenty, and it becomes your financing. It, you can't get the same high loan to values. Your rates go up on these DSCR loans. So it's imperative to maybe look at having some business lines of credit, having reserves in the bank, so you don't get caught in this position because once you're caught in this position and your credit score drops that much, it becomes way more challenging for financing. You always want to keep your scores as high as possible. That's essential when you're trying to do these burrs. So general lending guidelines on fix and flip loans. We talked about the 100% program. On the 100% program, you need to have eight plus deals in the past five years on this one program I'm talking about. And those could be a combination of flips and rentals. So we do need to verify your experience if you want the 100% program. But if you are newer to this game, meaning you have only done one deal or no deals or maybe two deals, you can potentially get 80 to 90% of purchase and 100% of repair costs financed. Usually the lenders have a cap on the gross loan amount of 75% of the ARV. So when they do their, when they take your construction budget and your scope of work and give it to the appraiser, the appraiser is going to give them a subject to completed value, which is your ARV. And so the gross loan amount can never exceed 75% of that ARV. So we know if your ARV is 325, right? Take that, multiply it by 75%. That means we know the max loan amount on a hard money loan would be 243,750. Other things to note, if you're in a rural area, not a large MSA, not as many of these hard money lenders like to make loans in, in these real rural communities. So if it's like a short-term rental or vacation area, just knowing that upfront to look for that, to ask the lender, hey, is this location decent to get you know max proceeds on a fix and flip loan or a fix, uh, flip to burr loan? On the standard fix and flip programs, you are making a monthly interest only payment. So you take the principal loan balance basically and multiply that by the interest rate. So you, you know, if it was 200,000 loan amount times 0 0.08 would be 8%, then divide by 12, that's your monthly interest only payment. Turn times are anywhere from seven to 17 days. These loan terms are anywhere from six to 12 months with the more of them are usually around 12 month terms, but there are some lenders that do shorter term loans. Usually there's no prepayment penalty on the fix and flip loans. However, the DSCR loans usually have a three to five year prepay penalty, depending on the lender. Experience borrowers get best pricing leverage. Obviously, if you have a track record of 30 deals in the last two years, you're going to get better pricing than somebody that's got no deals. Interior appraisal or BPO usually always required. So you're always going to have to get inside. Some lenders are okay with a BPO. Some need a full appraisal. Going over the DSCR loans, debt service coverage ratio, typically 1.25 or better, the better, uh, the higher, the better, the higher the credit score, the better the interest rate. Same thing with the leverage, you know, lower loan to value, it's better pricing. At the time of refinance, is there a lease in place or not? These are the questions that I would ask you so I could price these loans out because there's certain caveats when the property is not leased versus it is. If it's going to be a short term, these are the discussion points we're going to have. Again, max leverage is dependent on credit score and DSCR. If the property is vacant at the time of refinance, a rental survey is needed most of the time, which is 1007. It's a addendum to the appraisal. And on these type of loans, it's usually a full appraisal that's needed. So what do you need to have ready for your lender? Entity documents, purchase agreement, verification of experience, two months of bank statements, construction budget, insurance quote, title or closing attorney contact information, point of contact for the interior or the appraisal inspection. On the 100% program that we were talking about earlier for the fix and flip, they do require a feasibility study. So they would also need to get into the property and they basically take your construction budget, your scope of work and narrative, and they do a feasibility 
feasibility study to make sure that the budget is realistic to complete the project. So in closing, I appreciate you guys listening. If you want some lending questions answered or you have a project you want to discuss in detail, you can simply go to boexdean.com forward slash appointment. My cell phone's on the slide as well, as well as my, my email address. Not only do we do bridge, fix and flip, rental loans, we also do a lot of commercial lending, SBA. We work with banks and non-banks on SBA 7A and 504 loans, multifamily agency, HUD loans, CPACE loans, pretty much anything commercial or business related and real estate investing related. Uh, we work with those type of clients. I'm always happy to give a referral. If I can't do, get the deal done for some reason, and I know one of my colleagues can, I'm happy to give you contacts uh, that I've established over the last 20 plus years. As always, do me a favor, like the video, please comment in the comment section in YouTube where you're investing and share the video, share the channel with some colleagues that might get some value out of these shows that we're doing. Really appreciate you listening and watching. And I hope you have a great 2022 and we'll see you on the next show.